from Austin, Texas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Dell World 2015, brought to you by Dell. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Austin, Texas for Dell World. This is the Cube, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Ahmad, Ahmad, Vice President of Global Enterprise Solutions Architects and Alliances at Dell. Welcome to the Cube again. Great to see you. Yeah, good to see you again. Um, we were just saying on the intro about you know, the trends and trying to tease yeah. through all the, squint through all the EMC Dell acquisitions. You know, trying to make sense of you know, the VMware had a big drop last night in value, market's confused. And we're trying to tease out kind of where, where everyone's at. And I think one of the things we came to the conclusion of was we're back into the solutions provider market. That sounds like a, a cliche, it's been around for a while, but ultimately the users inside the big companies big and medium and small, yeah. want new stuff, they want their apps, so IT has to respond to that. So the customers are in charge, they want solutions. Yeah. So we're in a solutions world, people call it business outcomes, yeah. all that stuff. So that's your world. So, so that seems to be the big trend, also the high margin. It is very high so, margin. So yeah, yeah, I can buy commodity servers, build my own cloud with Dell and yeah. EMC, but at the end of the day, it's a solutions enabling environment. Yeah. What's your color on that? Because that seems to be the big trend right now, the enablement of it is, you know, uh, customer buying behavior and how customers used to consume is also changing, right? So customers used to consume IT as a server storage networking, applications, right? All separately, now that's changing, right? Customers are looking to acquire and consume technology in different ways. Uh, they're much more workload oriented. Um, so, you know, it's not that their IT figures out exactly what you need and then calls up Dell or any one of our competitors and say, hey, you know, can you give me a better discount? I think that world is changing uh, much, much faster. Um, uh, there is still the need for, you know, uh, continuous uh, deployment of, you know, server storage and networking, but I think as you said, solutions has been that word that, uh, that's been around, <laughs> thrown around quite a bit, but we're, we're making it real with yeah. a lot of our, what, what Dell actually calls our Dell Blueprints, and Dell Blueprints are basically uh, a combination of our reference architectures and engineered solutions. So yeah. think of reference architectures as, you know, you've got all of our server storage networking, but then it puts uh, VMware, Red Hat, Microsoft, Nutanix, Nexenta, just to name a few, Cumulus, into those reference architectures to make those claims a lot more effective. And then on the engineered solutions, customers who don't really want to consume a reference architecture, they would rather get a stack from us, an integrated stack. That's where we announced yesterday the Dell hybrid cloud solution uh, on stage with uh, uh, Satya Nadala and Michael. And, uh, and, and those kinds of engineered solutions and, and integrated stacks uh, also have very powerful claims. So that's sort of how you know, we're, we're solving for those solutions with customers. Let's so talk about the two dynamics that we were uh, also analyzing, which is that in the enterprise, there's really two big kind of moving parts right now where the action is. Yeah. Architecture, yeah. so designing the solutions architecture. And then the developers, right? So you have a developer model in the enterprise, which kind of looks like DevOps, yep. but it's not maybe pure DevOps. It might be, at the end of the day, it's application development, right? But there's also a re-architecture going on. There's a lot of people thinking, okay, I need to rethink yeah. architecture. Yeah. So it's not just simply hire more developers. There's some architecture involved. Comment on that, because open source, you got yeah. Docker containers, you got, kind of an inter intersection between developers and architecture. Yeah, and this is what we like at Dell, right? So you, Michael talked about this yesterday in his keynote where um, you know, Dell stands for choice. I mean, 31 years, Michael has stood for choice. He's stood for a complete heterogeneous environment. He's said that, hey, I'll go partner you know, with others and go disrupt markets. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, some people say commoditized markets, but we've done very well in taking fiefdoms and breaking them and yeah, democratizing yeah. them. You know, you saw it in PCs, you saw it in servers. I think when it comes to solutions and it comes to DevOps or cloud, uh, big data, and others, that's also been a stack-based solution, right? And mm -hmm. we want to ensure that we're providing that offer. So since our announcement last Monday, uh, there's been a lot of conversations. So I, um, what announcement? <laughs> Is it an announcement? <laughs> That's right, just, just a little bit. Uh, if, uh, I was in France last week with uh, you know, Microsoft's uh, worldwide sales teams and you know, ensuring that they understood that Dell still stands for choice. Uh, yeah. you know, even though we've announced and intend to acquire VMware, you know, we, uh, we continue to work with VMware and for VMware to continue to succeed, they need to continue to be a non-biased, uh, you know, uh, hardware provider. So your provider. phone's ringing off the hook, right? Exactly. So you're so you're getting all these calls. Yeah. What are some of the things? I mean, your email box, inbox must be stacked up. 
What's the phone calls like? I mean, are the people freaking out? What's the questions? What's the frequently asked questions that you're getting? So let me, let me uh, hit On all- On the acquisition. All, yeah, absolutely. So customers. So let's take customers, partners, and then let's take alliance partners, right? So customers are loving it because they're saying, well, uh, I mean, we have, four or 5,000 customers here. We've been you know, seeing customers. I'm sure some of those customers have been on your show here. But the, the, the feedback, overwhelming feedback, is that, hey, you now are able to provide me not only just you know, the leading storage platform, the compute platform, our open networking type of solution. So from, a, uh, from an acquisition perspective, EMC, as you guys know, uh, works very well and uh, plays very well and is very focused in the large enterprise, right? Dell has been very focused in the mid enterprise. So I think between the large enterprise and the mid enterprise, there is really good solutions that we're able to bring to market. The second one is channel partners. Think about channel partners that Dell was trying to go to and say, hey, you know, uh, we have our client solution, but we also have our enterprise. And they, was, they were saying, well, you know, uh, are you guys really ready for the enterprise? Well, guess what? We're now the powerhouse of the enterprise. So a lot of channel partners are a lot more interested in carrying the full Dell stack uh, than just a compute portfolio or just a client portfolio because they know, I mean, I met with some top channel partners here. I mean, they're, they're on the CRN top 100 list and most of them are here. Uh, I, I think you guys met Cheryl Cook and Cheryl was highlighting the same thing, which is, you know, these channel partners, now all of a sudden, you know, we've changed the game. And then the third one is alliance partners and alliance partners are seeing, hey, Dell has always stood for 30 plus years of open innovation and we want to continue to drive it with alliance partners. I've always said Dell has the Chi Boons Pickens, T Boone Pickens, you know, strategy of all of the above. Yeah, you want it, we got it, and yeah. you're comfortable taking. Like you mentioned, Cumulus. You mentioned Nutanix. You're comfortable taking those products. Yep. You know, packaging them through integration, adding value, yep. and making money. That's right. And sharing that with your partners. Do you see that in any way changing as a result of this acquisition? You know, here's how I look at it, Dave. It's uh, if you take a look at those solutions that you just mentioned. Take Nutanix, take Nexenta, take VMware, take Microsoft, Red Hat, right? All of those, they, what do they require? They require a strong compute converged infrastructure to run on. And we are now providing that strong compute converged infrastructure that can become software defined either with VMware or with Microsoft or with Red Hat or hyper converged with Nutanix platforms. So you know, Deeridge is here, the CEO of uh, Nutanix, and you know, we're we're our, I mean, our business has gone off the hook over the course of the last you know six months uh, in terms of the growth that we have seen with hyper converged. So we continue to you know see that. Then you take that forward to say, okay, yes, we are providing the you know, uh, industry's best uh, powerhouse for converged compute, but then you start thinking about apps, where should they reside, right? So if the customer then wants to go to either a public cloud, so we are then offering, uh, taking that compute architecture, fully virtualized, software defined with those partners, and then uh, giving choice, be it AWS, be it Azure, be it vCloud Air, Google, so our Dell Cloud Manager is able to take our partner ecosystem and also burst out to all those other platforms. So that's where our Dell Blueprints, we are trying to make it very simple yeah. for the Dell Blueprints to be marketed out to our customers. So you can go to dell.com slash blueprints. And, and it, the idea is it rapid deployment. That. Rapid deployment, yeah. For new architectures. Yeah, it comes with deployment guides, it comes with you know, scalable. Is there uh, certifications involved too? Is there certification, yeah, there is, yeah. We're, we just actually launched some competency certifications around data solutions and right. cloud solutions for our channel partners. So one of the exciting things on this uh, trip for me is besides the, all the flurry of acquisition commentary and analysis, which we love, I mean, we just can't sleep at night just watching everything go down, yeah. but is Michael led on his keynote yesterday, which I, besides the grand vision of the, his, of the future of the world, is he led with IOT. Yeah. He introduced the gateway product, which is basically right. an ingestion box. Yeah. What is your, uh, your take there? What are you hearing from customers? IOT is super hot, and we can see Dell, I mean, I'm speculating that Dell will be making sensors, yeah. making connections to sensors, providing the software yeah. for that. Um, but what does the IOT solution look like from your standpoint? Sure, so Andy Rhodes is our general manager who, uh, who leads our Internet of Things uh, division and Andy and I were just talking about it yesterday and you know, it's Dell being that center point where we aggregate a lot of those sensors right now, you know, commercial sense mostly uh, is where we're focused. But where does all that drive? Andy actually comes from the data center side of the business. Yeah. So he gets how much of all those IOT devices will create data and you'll need to store that data on that compute converged platform that I just talked about. So, you know, it's about 
getting all that data and actually getting that data stored and then running analytics on it. So one of our blueprints is our big data blueprint. So you're able to take IoT and you're able to then take the IoT data that's running on our Dell blueprint for big data analytics. So not only are we doing Cloudera, Hadoop, MongoDB, but then also on top of that, we've got SAP HANA as part of that blueprint. And then we have our own Statistica acquisition that we did, so we're able to do actual real-time analytics on that blueprint. So that blueprint is ready and packaged. The cool part is you're able to then take IoT and that data and then run analytics, but then do it for a small, medium, or large. We actually call it t-shirt sizing. <laughs> you guys got a big charter um, ahead of you. I mean, now you have a lot of masters to serve. I saw Microsoft on stage, obviously that was really compelling. Um, Frenemies, that was, as Bloomberg was calling them. But that's been around for a while. I mean, you guys have been partnering with everyone. Dell has been very partner-centric. And so now you have a lot of uh, portfolio moving parts. Lego blocks, whatever you want to call it, to cobble together and build these new solutions. So Blueprints makes a lot of sense, I yep. get that. The next level, when you start getting into the EMC impact, is the go-to-market becomes more complicated because yep. the EMC's got a great sales force. They so do. high margin, yep. high touch. That's right. How does that relate and change your world? So think of, I mean, EMC, I, I would say they have been doing this much longer than even we've been doing it, right? So think about all the digital transformation that Michael talked about, and you see VCE, for example, you know, so VBlock, yeah. VCE, I mean, that's been the first reference architectures that, that were born, and then they yeah. turned into, you know, others started copying that with FlexPod and others, right? Uh, uh, then you take a look at, you know, VSpecs, you take a look at VirtuStream, you look at Pivotal, you look at RSA, so all those platforms are there, and then, we ensure, and again, they have done a phenomenal job, again, I would say at the top end of the market, right? So when you took a, take a look at what we call our Global 500 customers, or call it the Global 1000 customers, that's been a sweet spot. We want to ensure that we take that and you know, take our Dell Blueprints that we're, we're driving you know, in the mid-market and also scaling up. So I think that's complementary more than anything else. So a lot of that converged infrastructure is designed to sort of mimic the capabilities of cloud yeah. on-prem. I want to talk a little bit about what you're seeing because you, you sell the service providers as well. Yeah. We talked a little bit about this off camera. You're seeing Amazon has a very clear strategy. Sweep the floor, put everything in the public cloud. I mean, that's, they're pretty clear about that. I mean, maybe not that obvious, but that's what they, what the, yeah. what they want to do. We know that. Um, and they, they're expensive. They make a lot of money. They have, yeah. gro they have uh, operating profits similar to that of EMC. Yeah. So they're doing very well. But there's a whole, and, and I've observed this a number of times in theCUBE, if you take a look at the services market, yep. IBM, you know, huge services, business, 30, 40, 50 billion dollars, they've got less than 10% of the market. Yep. Why is that? The reason is because services tends to be local. Yeah. What's happening with local service providers and how is Dell reaching them, supporting yeah. them, and what kind of business do you have there? Dave, you know, that's a great question, and we were talking a little bit about that off camera, but you know, what we're seeing right now is a huge buyer shift. So the buyers that our sales team, right, so Dell has 20,000 sellers out there, you know, we would sell to a regular commercial customer, an SMB customer, large customer, public sector, right, uh, in, in different types of customers that are out there. Now we're seeing that buyer shift where service providers, so think of a lot of channel partners, think of a lot of hosters. These folks are now looking to build I almost call them a mini-me version of AWS, or Azure, or Google, because there are data residency challenges now. So if you go to Europe especially, right? Uh, data, there is data governing laws with Safe Harbor that you cannot have data leave France, or leave Belgium, or leave Germany, Germany yeah. right, for that matter. And the same thing's happening in Canada, the same thing's happening in Brazil. It's happening all over the place. So uh, I think the big honking data centers that you know, AWS has built, they're also trying to figure out, hey, how do I create more local partnerships already? And how do I take some of that, uh, you know, uh, good uh, revenue uh, that they have created with, you know, some other technology manufacturers and actually take that and pass off that offering there? We want to be way ahead of that and we want to ensure, so for example, we've got some very large hosters in Europe, in Latin America, in Asia Pacific and Japan. Uh, where they're already starting to build out, because Dell actually built out the early Facebook's data centers. We still build out the Azure data center. We are still uh, part of Twitter's data center. So we've learned a lot on how scalable and scale out data centers have been built. We have a division that Ashley Gorkpawala, our server uh, uh, GM runs, it's the DSS division, uh, Dell Scalable Solutions that we have, for Dell's uh, server uh, scalable solutions, and those are really geared towards you know, customers who have those unique requirements 
uh, hoster service providers, and we are not even talking about AT&T's or Orange or Vodafone or uh, Telefonica right now, right? I'm, that's, that's another level which is all the NFV work that we're doing with those service providers because they see a lot of rich content going over to Facebook and going over to WhatsApp and others you, traversing over their environment. Right. So that's, uh, so, I mean, that's really the service provider. So uh, you ecosystem. mentioned you know, some of the big guys, Facebook, you know, Twitter, uh, you yeah. talked about Azure. So you're selling Dell servers into those environments in, in, in significant volume. It's not yeah. just like a, oh yeah, Michael Dell, Satya Nadella, we're doing business, you know, you gotta, yeah. you gotta take some of my servers so I can yeah. say that I'm doing business with the cloud yeah. guys. This yeah. is, you're talking significant volume, can you confirm yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll put it this way, so I can't disclose what, significant, what volume there is as a private company, but let me just say, you know, Michael talks about this regularly, that you know, Uber uh, data center, you know, Dell continues to you know, go develop Uber's data center. Uh, you know, Ancestry.com, a lot of these ones that, are, that have been, you know, uh, that have come up, but they have realized uh, very, I mean, I would say early on, where a lot of the others uh, would not work with those folks to customize their server solutions, Dell started doing that five, six, seven, eight years ago, right? Uh, and now we have learned a lot from that. We created pods for them. So we learned from some of the bigger ones uh, and they now use ODMs in certain cases. They use Dell in certain cases. They use HP. Uh, but they see the difference that Dell has provided. Dell's taken that model, made it into a pod and we actually then go to other startups like Uber or Ancestry.com and now the hosters in Europe and, and you know, Asia Pacific and, you know, and other parts of the world. We're taking that learning that we had and goodness and passing it on to customers. I wanted to ask you uh, about customization because yeah. the conventional wisdom five years ago was, oh, Amazon and Google, they just buy off-the-shelf components. They don't need customized you know, hardware. And then, <laughs> of course, when everybody was saying that, Amazon and Google were quietly saying, no, no, we need highly customized hardware. Right. And they've since come out and, and talked about that. So, and initially when that information came out, People thought, okay, well that's all sort of ODMs. Dell was at the heart of that. So, yeah. you know, o ODMs was always an interesting dynamic, right? Oh, ODMs is going to kill Dell, and Dell's yeah, like, yeah. no, 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 we'll compete with the ODMs. Not really. have, so, can you talk about the dynamic? How have those two worlds come together? Is Dell becoming more ODM-like? Are the ODMs trying to get more, you know, Dell-like? What's uh, going on I, th there? I think Dell is, uh, is becoming more and more solution-oriented to take, uh, you know, those, so obviously we have, Regular customers, so your commercial customer, public sector customers, large banks, financials, who want a certain stack of platform that's not does not require much customization, so we have that. But then that DSS platform that I mentioned is for our customers who are looking for that level of customization, but still want to drive big data analytics, still want to drive a lot of you know uh, our VDI architectures that that they're able to provide to their users. But it's really interesting when you take a look at, uh, when you talked about uh, you know, Amazon or you know, Azure, that they don't require a lot of customization. They have hundreds or thousands of engineers, R&D engineers, who actually take a box uh, you know, from Quanta or Delta or Supermicro or something yep. and actually put their software on it. They actually extract a lot of the software and they've written their own software right. because you know, they don't need 1,000 features. They only need to use 50 features in that platform. And if a manufacturer's not doing it for them, they have hired engineers to do that. We at Dell, in our customizable solution area, we actually can you know, uh, create a lot of that. But then again, for the customer, by partnering up with Cumulus. So I'll give you a Cumulus example. I mean, I think it's public knowledge where Cumulus runs one of the largest data center network technologies, right, right. in one of the data centers. And we started working with Cumulus, with JR Rivers, and we started to take Linux and put it on our Dell networking switches. So when you put Linux on Dell networking switches, you don't have Dell networking OS on it. Right. But we then package that up in the data centers to bring that cost down from an OPEX standpoint. So you have a Linux administrator managing the server, the storage, and the network. One guy. So what you're saying is the guys, the big mega you know, internet folks that have thousands and thousands of PhDs running around, yeah. they might not need you guys to yeah. do that piece, but there's a whole, as to, to, to my earlier point, 90% of the market yeah. is local. Those guys need that capability because they, they do. don't have as many engineers running around. Absolutely. And that's a strategic direction that so you guys see have that, done. You see that, how that's different than a Supermicro or Quanta, right. right? They are very much about, hey, here's my you know, hardware. Here's go, the box. Go, go, go nuts, No right? frills. We're, we're saying, hey, here's our box. It, it, it has all, all our features in it, or you can customize it with Cumulus, with VMware, with Microsoft, with Red Hat, and then we can try to do a reference architecture mm -hmm. with you. 
So one of the things we're saying earlier was, enterprises have Google Envy, they have Amazon <laughs> Envy, they want to build their own clouds. Yeah. This is now the new kind of procurement consumption model. Yeah. Build out a core new data center, I guess, or colo, still on-prem, yeah. and private are two different dynamics. Yeah. But there's a trend there, so this is why we probably the ODM angle, it's like, Amazon builds their own boxes. That's right. <laughs> Not everyone can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you guys are commoditizing the hardware side of it, yeah. not just to sell boxes, but to bring in the solution piece. So bridge that gap. So I'm, I'm a, I'm a uh, large telco, or I'm so, I'm like, hey, yeah. you know what, I got to build my own cloud. Yeah. What, tell me, take, take me through that solution connection. Sure, so uh, if you look at a, let's, let me use a manufacturing, large manufacturing in Detroit, a yeah. customer, right? So you can, you can think of them today managing, you know, they've got a billion dollar IT budget, <laughs> and their IT budget is usually handled by, hey, here's a billion dollars, uh, you know, uh, make sure that that car comes out at the end of the assembly line faster than it used to before I gave you the billion dollars, right? And now Amazon is calling that business line executive who actually gives that billion dollar to the CIO saying, well, I can cut that all into fractions and for 25% of the dollar I can actually you know, do that work for you in the public cloud. So the CIO, Number one is saying, He's well. He's got his attention. Uh, yeah, to, you know, yeah, hello, to, I'm interested. Exactly. Tell me more. So, <laughs> so CIO is now saying, hey, why don't I take my data center for you know, predictable workloads and non-predictable workloads, and that, that's how they start to differentiate between the two, and they say, hey, why don't I uh, deploy a hybrid cloud mm -hmm. in my environment, start with on-premise, it can also be off-premise, they build that out, and then they're able to burst to it when they need for unpredictable workloads, Right, because unpredictable workloads, it's you know you have a certain time yeah. and the new you know business uh, auto request, scale and all those scale things and are others great. have yeah. come down. So, what we're helping a lot of the CIOs is to say, hey, you know, rather than going to Amazon. By the way, we have some data that shows that customers who went to public cloud, a good chunk of them, the data is something like 60 to 70 percent of them are coming back into a private cloud environment because the cost of an Amazon AWS. It's, it looks nice right up front, but if you actually then take a long tail of it and it's actually look at it for five it's years. A, it's the iceberg. Cost of ownership becomes per, an issue. Uh, for exa exactly, so for example, they, a public cloud provider will charge you per virtual machine instance, right? So if you're actually building out, let me just use an example of 3,500 orders per minute SQL database. That requires a server storage network, and if you were to deploying 3,500 orders per minute, you need to run about 25 concurrent virtual machine instances. If you put that into public cloud, you will continue to pay that over the course of five years. Not, you may not pay the acquisition cost of your hardware and software, but over time you would pay. And we have charts, we actually show, we have a study, it's actually been validated by Principal Technologies that actually shows that chart. You should share and that with the Wikibon team because that's the number one question we get yeah. from a lot of practitioners is, I need to understand the cost of ownership, that's lifetime right. value of you the cloud that's right. approach. Exactly. And that's ultimately, because they're making a big bet. Yeah, you get my attention, knock down a billion dollars yeah. by 25-30%, yeah. that's good cash, but then where's that going to shift to? Exactly. That's the big question. And, and then if, and that Dell blueprint for cloud, that actually has those kinds of claims and data. Uh, happy to share it with the Wikibon team so that you great. guys have it. That'd be great. So final great. question for you is, sure. just the impact of the M, uh, acquisition. Yeah. Dell, EMC, how has your life changed? And share some insight, color, anecdo anecdotes yeah. about your past week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's been great actually. La last week when the news broke, I was in Europe. Uh, I was at the Microsoft conference and uh, we, we, you know, the news broke and the interest uh, from uh, our Microsoft team and then I uh, went from that to another conference where we had you know, our Red Hat teams and others. Uh, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. I, Customers who are there at these events are starting to look at Dell as, wow, you guys really do mean business when Michael said that he's going to move to the <laughs> enterprise. You're moving to the enterprise. I mean, the $67 billion, <laughs> I love the way Michael said it on stage, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he said, 60, uh, EMC, $67 billion, and he said, priceless. He said, no, he said, <laughs> and he said, Controlling your own destiny. Con controlling your own priceless. destiny, priceless. That's what he said. <laughs> that's right. and that's, and that's, that's a great mo. You it, guys are in a good spot. It is, and then we're excited by it. Uh, our customers are excited. Uh, we have 600 channel partners who are here, 6 to 700 channel partners, Cheryl Cook and Jim Defoe and others. Uh, they're thrilled to do a lot more with us. Our alliance partners are thrilled to do a lot more with us, so we're excited. We're, we're looking forward to this this year. I'm Rana Ahmad. Thanks so much for joining us in theCUBE. Thanks for sharing the insight. Vice President of Global Solutions and Alliances here inside theCUBE with Dell. Thanks for sharing uh, the data. We're right back with more after this short Good break. Good to see you guys.